This is a short video of me replacing the clutch master cylinder on my Land Rover TD5. I knew there was a problem with the master cylinder as I had a constant wet patch on the um, mat in the front footwell of, of the Land Rover underneath the clutch pedal. The oily patch was quite small initially but as the weeks went on it got worse. Interestingly enough I didn't seem to lose a lot of fluid from the uh, master cylinder reservoir. The first thing I had to do was remove some of the trim that was holding the uh, soundproofing and carpet underneath the steering wheel area. Getting behind the carpet will allow access to the six bolts that hold the um, clutch pedal housing in place. Four of the bolts have got quite easy access. The two bottom ones, however, are a bit restricted by the carpet. I didn't want to remove the carpet altogether so that I could access the two bottom bolts. So what I did, I made a couple of incisions in the corners of the carpet. There's a hole there that the pedal travels through. I did two incisions at 45 degrees and 25mm long. That allowed me access to the bolts. Here I'm spraying a little bit of penetrating oil on the bolts, um, just in case they're a little bit stiff. But for a change on my Defender, these were quite easy. This is what the top of the clutch pedal housing looks like. Um, with the six screws. Um, in the middle there's a bracket holding a couple of um, plugs. The top one is all I can assume is some sort of sensor for the clutch fluid and that is actually um, attached to the master cylinder. So once that plug is unclipped and out of the way I go about removing the six screws that hold the access cover on the top of the master cylinder housing. At this point there's no need to remove the top cover completely, I just wanted to do it just to check to make sure the, uh, the fluid on the floor mat was actually coming from the master cylinder. Removing the six bolts was no problem, they were all pretty loose, uh, well not over tight, and um, the spring was just attached via some sort of bracket to one of the bolts and that came away quite easily. There's a bolt there that I loosened by mistake, but later on, off camera, I tightened it back up. I used my battery powered ratchet to um, remove these bolts and it made quite easy work of it, really. This magnetic tray is always handy. All six bolts are out. I set about removing the housing. Unfortunately, I forgot to undo the, um, the hydraulic connection at the top. So that was a bit of a struggle, but eventually I did it and, um, and extracted the housing through the gap. It took a little twisting and maneuvering, but eventually it came out. After removing the old master cylinder from the housing, I made a note of um, how far along the nuts were on the thread. I gave it all a bit of a squirt with some brake cleaner. It wasn't too, in too bad a condition, really. This is where it was situated in the bulkhead. And um, interestingly, no gasket. Here I'm just checking the clutch pedal and the housing. They're in good condition, fortunately. I don't think this is the first time the master cylinder has been changed. Here I've got the um, new master cylinder and a gasket. Both items seem very good. The um, gasket is self-adhesive on one side, which is handy. I just wish the new master cylinder would have come with all new nuts and bolts. The new master cylinder only came with one nut, which was on the threaded part of the actuator pin. Here I'm just making sure that the um, lock nut on the new master cylinder is in about the same place as the lock nut on the old master cylinder. And this is an essential thing to do because it's very difficult to adjust the pedal position once the whole assembly is back in the vehicle. I'd like to say that fitting the new master cylinder in the housing would was easy but unfortunately I made a right dog's dinner of it and I found it very frustrating um, but I got there eventually. I 
I noticed the flange on the old master cylinder had some silicon on it, so I applied some to to the flange on the on the new master cylinder just to be safe. I also applied copper grease to all of the threaded parts. The only way I could locate this bottom bolt was with uh, a pair of pin nose pliers. The space is really limited. For various reasons I had to take the uh, slow cylinder out of the housing a couple of times because I dropped the nuts, couldn't find them or um, one of the nuts didn't fit. You've probably noticed I've speeded the film up quite a bit. This job took me quite a while to get right. I don't think there's an easier or a quicker way of doing this. You've just got to be patient and persevere. I'm just so glad that I had somewhere comfortable to do the reassembly work. There is no way I would have been able to do this um, work with the housing in situ. Um, it's the most frustrating job. To do the final adjustments I had to attach a pair of vice grips to the actuator pin to stop it from spinning. The hydraulic connection on the master cylinder is uh, made via a type of swivel um, which requires a copper washer. Obviously the copper washer didn't come with the, um, the new slave cylinder so um, what I did, I just annealed the old one and that should have softened it up and made it reusable and it did. I also backed it up with a bit of PTFE tape on threads. To anneal copper, just heat it up until it's cherry red and then let it cool down naturally or quench it. Here I am fitting the um, self-adhesive part of the gasket to the housing. Simplest part of the job. After some twisting and turning and persuasion, I eventually got the housing back in position, making sure not to pinch any of the cables or pipes. The next job was to get the six holes to line up through the bulkhead into the um, clutch pedal assembly. Um, what I did, I used a punch as a podger, which really helped, and also you can um, wiggle the um, clutch pedal in various directions until you engage with the uh, bolt holes in the housing. Once again I applied copper grease to all threaded parts. The bolts all lined up and tightened quite easily. I was expecting a bit of a struggle but this um, was one of the easier parts of the job. This is the um, punch or podger that I inserted just to locate the first bolt position. I'm just loosely fitting all the bolts until I get them all started. I see there's a wire hanging down there in the foreground. I have no idea where that came from. I'm going to have to further investigate that later. It's a bit of a fiddly job because you're in the kneeling down position. The ratchet powered driver um, made short work of tightening these bolts up. It was a very simple job to get these all in position and not tightened up. The spring hooks through a hole in the top of the pedal, the clutch pedal that is, and um, then connects to a bracket which is then fixed with the top bolt of the housing. Once the hydraulic line to the slave cylinder is connected, it's time to top up the clutch fluid. Here I'm just fitted the top cover on the um, clutch housing. I had to be very careful topping up the clutch fluid because it would easily overflow if I added too much. It takes a while because it seems as though I'm putting in a lot of fluid into the um, reservoir, but in actual fact it was very little that I was putting in. 
but it just seemed that way because the capacity of the reservoir is quite low. The bleed nipple for the clutch fluid is on the right hand side of the defender on the top of the slave cylinder. To bleed or purge the air from the hydraulic system I initially used one of those one man clutch and brake bleeding kits. But eventually I had to get a very reluctant wife to assist me. Purging the air from the system took a bit of time and patience but I got there in the end. That's another enjoyable and satisfying job that I've completed on my Defender TD5. To complete this job it took me about five hours. I got the parts from various sellers on eBay. Total cost about £30. Now that's a bargain.